In this session, we're going to look at a really quick way to create a virtual reality experience using an InfraWorks model. Now, for starters, I want to give credit to a colleague of mine named John Sayer for coming up with this workflow. A couple weeks ago, John called me and said, hey, do you want to see something cool? To which I responded, yes, I would. Well, what he showed me became the basis for what I am now going to show you. As you can see, I'm starting off here in InfraWorks. I would like to create a shareable exhibit of this bridge model. Now, when it comes to exhibits, it's nice to be able to create a rendered image. Animated fly-throughs are also helpful. What I want to do is physically put the viewer inside this model so they can experience the environment in 3D. To do that, I'm going to start by exporting a portion of this model as an FBX file. So let me orbit this up to a top view. We'll zoom out. I will then click the view cube to get a perfect top-down view. We'll center this on screen. I will then open the settings and utilities menu and I'll choose export 3D model. I will then define the area I'd like to export. In this case, I'm going to use a bounding box. And then this is a relatively small model, so I'm going to grab most of it. Let me click to start the bounding box and I'll come down and double click to finish. I will then push this dialog box up to make it a little easier to see. I'm going to be exporting this FBX as a single file. I'll click the folder icon, and I'm going to save this in the models folder. We'll call this bridge underscore project, and I'll click save. Finally, when I export the FBX, I would like to include the materials and textures, and I'd like to merge objects with the same texture. I will then click export to create the FBX. Once the FBX file has been created, we will jump over to Navisworks Manage. From here, I will open the FBX file. I'll do that by clicking the Open icon. I will then navigate into the Models directory. I'll ensure my files of type is set to FBX. I'll select that FBX file we just created, and I'll click Open. When the file comes up, I'm going to make a quick adjustment. I don't know that this is 100% necessary, but it makes me feel good. I'm going to come over to the Selection tree, and I'll select my FBX file. I will then right-click, and I'll come down. I apologize, this is off the screen. I'm going to select Units and Transform. Right here, you can see when the file was exported from InfraWorks, it was exported using centimeters. I prefer to work in feet, so I'll choose feet, and I'll click OK. I will then press Escape to deselect the model. Now let's zoom in. I'll do that by rolling the mouse wheel forward, and then we can orbit. I'll come over and select the Orbit tool. I will then hold the left mouse button down. And we'll swing this around. Let's zoom in. I'll pan over. Generally speaking, what I'm doing is putting myself where I'd like to be in the virtual reality environment. This looks good here. The only remaining step is to render this model. I'll do that by going to the Render tab. I'll choose Render in Cloud. I'd like to render the current view. For output type, I'm going to change this to Stereo Panorama. I can then select my desired quality, exposure, and width. Note that adjusting these settings will affect the number of cloud credits necessary for the rendering. Currently, this is zero. Since I'm going to be sharing this rendering with you, I'm going to bump these settings up to the maximum. For render quality, I'll choose Final. Exposure will go with Advanced. And Width, I'll choose 2046 pixels. Since this model is going to be rendered in the cloud, I'll have it email me when complete, and I'll choose Start Rendering. When the email comes in, it will look just like this. From here, I can click the Sign In button to access the Render Gallery where I'll find my stereo panorama. I'll click the Sign In button, and then I'll log in using my credentials. Right here, we can see the latest rendering. The icon shows us it's a stereo panorama. I'm going to click to select this. When it opens up, we'll drag this down so we can see the entire thing. By default, we are seeing a 360 degree panorama of the rendering. If I hold the left mouse button down, I can orbit around in here. Note that if the preview on your phone option is selected, we will also be given a hyperlink and a QR code so we can view the panorama in stereo using a contemporary smartphone. Let's try that. I'm going to bring up my phone, and then I'll tap to launch the QR reader application, and then I'll scan the code. Now, for this to work best, you want a completely empty interface. You can see I've got some extra buttons down there at the bottom. The interface items you see is going to depend on the QR reader application that you're using. To clean things up, I'm going to click the Share button at the bottom middle of the screen. I'll choose Copy to copy that hyperlink to the clipboard. 
I will then close the web browser and go back to the main screen, and then I'll relaunch it. I will then press and hold in the address bar, and then I'll tap Paste and Go. To see the stereo pair, I can simply rotate my phone to landscape mode. Then, to see the stereo pair in 3D, all I have to do is insert my phone into a compatible VR device. On screen is an example of said device. This is the Google Cardboard. It's capable of holding several smartphone models. Personally, I like using this device, the ViewMaster VR. It's only a couple dollars more than the cardboard version, and it comes with additional software you can play with. For our purposes here, all we have to do is open the device, insert the smartphone, snap it closed, and we're ready to experience our model in 3D. Please note that I have only shown you a small sample of the devices you can use to view these stereo panoramas. Feel free to select the device or retailer of your choice. That being said, if you already have a device and you'd like to experience this same bridge model, please scan the QR code on screen. So if you're looking for an inexpensive way to convert an InfraWorks model into a virtual reality experience, try experimenting with this technique. There is no better way to review a design than to actually put yourself inside the model. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.